Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Miranda Lever, COO here at Thinkific, and I am so very excited to have a chit chat with Chuck today. Chuck Anderson is uh, joining us here, and uh, Chuck is a coach for coaches, helping coaches and consultants double their fees, create a continuous flow of new clients, and uh, hit that you know next 100K in coaching engagement uh, magical number that we're all so, so fond of. Chuck discovered that coaches that he worked with loved coaching, but were really challenged by selling. And in working with uh, those coaches, he discovered a system and built a system out that allowed coaches to do what they do best without ever having to feel like a salesperson and have been achieving a lot of success along the way. So Chuck, welcome. And I'm excited to have a, have a chat and hear what you are doing and uh, go from there. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Miranda. Yeah. Um, how's it, how's your week treating you? I, I know that you're here in Vancouver as well, so probably enjoying some rain. <laughs> yes, well, and I think uh, particularly more rainy than usual, and, uh, but uh, managing to stay dry. Uh, <laughs> and so, so yeah, it's uh, interest, interesting, interesting uh, time of year for us. Um, Chuck's uh, company, Coach Marketing Lab, is built around a program that he developed, and I know he's doing all sorts of cool things right now, especially when it comes to webinars, uh, Facebook ads, and, and digging into online courses as well, and helping uh, coaches build out programs from an online course perspective. So I'd love to just dive right in and hear about some of the things that you're doing. What's the, the biggest thing on, you know, what is the biggest thing in your world right now that you're working on with your clients? Yeah, well, the biggest thing that's happening in our in our world right now that and, and we're getting uh, just a, a ton of attention for is is helping coaches market themselves uh, in a way where if they want appointments, they can get as many appointments as they want. If they're trying to sell one of their online programs, they can sell that in an automated way. But we're getting approached by coaches who are uh, a bit disillusioned with 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 their marketing, either they've tried something before and that didn't work, or they've been trying to do it themselves and they're just overwhelmed with it all. Um, and the thing about coaches is that they're the product, right? And so if you're selling one-on-one -on -one consulting services or coaching services, you're also the product. So your time is limited because you, you have to actually spend the time uh, delivering services to your clients. So, so you don't want to spend a lot of time marketing. And so a lot of them just want, look, is there a way for me to put this on autopilot so I can get all the appointments I want? And then when I'm full of appointments and I don't want, uh, and, and I can't handle anymore, you know, can I sell something else in an automated way? And, and so we're get, we're having a lot of people approach us with that, um, you know, to kind of create that steady stream of, of clients and, and, uh, and online program buyers uh, for their programs. Mm -hmm. And what kind of stages do you usually work with uh, your clients at? Are these new people, like new people to coaching? Are they people that have been doing coaching for a really long time and just sort of struggling to, to market? in you know 2017 2018 yeah we we work with a variety i would say that the majority of the people that we work with um that and especially the ones that get the fastest results are they're ones that are already doing uh some coaching very well um and they're they're up against their their own limitations in terms of you know uh, getting that steady flow of appointments and uh, I would, and and also, uh, you know, creating and marketing their online programs. That being said, we we do work with a lot of people who are um, just starting out. And the the one of the problems with 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 just starting out is that there's not a lot of marketing um, support in in the certification programs and all the education that coaches get. Um, so we work with some of those as well. Um, it's a little bit different though, because they haven't really figured out what their niche is. So, so there's some extra work that we need to do there. Uh, and then right up to, you know, companies that are already doing, you know, between five and $10 million in coaching sales. And, um, and, and we come in and we work with their, their, their sales team, their marketing team and their coaching team to be able to really fine tune the whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, cause the, the big part of it is, Coaches don't love to sell, and this is 
they hate it. If they could just coach all day long and never have to breathe a word of sales, they, they, that's what they would prefer. And so um, they avoid it. They put it off until the last possible minute. Some of them sadly never do it. And so they have to go and do something else, but they don't, comfortable, you know, you know, um, stage of, you know, not doing enough or doing too much. And then also the big companies who are doing it to scale, it's all the same thing. It's, it's, it's just a matter of how much volume do you want and how do we structure this in a way that works for you? So you don't have to do things you hate to do like sell. And, uh, and, and so we have a unique approach to that where, um, it really speaks to the fears and the concerns that most, um, you know, coaches and course creators that we work with, uh, have so that, uh, so that they can really feel good about what they're doing. Awesome. Awesome. So I always love to try to pull things back to stories and, uh, ideally a specific story. So I'd love for you to think about, uh, maybe a coach that came to you that had been coaching for a while, but was really just at a point in their business where they were struggling and walk us through, uh, for that person, you can, you can anonymize them and give them a different name, of course, if you wish, but I'd love to hear about what are the problems that they were experiencing in their business? How did you even, uh, start to, to try to solve that? And where did you go from there? Sure. So, yeah. So one of our best case studies, uh, is Clara. Um, and you know, Clara came to us with a, uh, an interesting problem because she already had some clients, but she was way undercharging for her services. And, um, so she had a, a, a coaching program that she wanted to market. And she also had, uh, two online programs that she had, uh, online courses that she had created that she was having difficulty, uh, selling. And so she was super overworked and not making enough money. So the very first thing that we did with her is work with her on her pricing. And, uh, and, and so, and, and we often do with our clients, you know, um, instead of charging the lowest possible amount that you can get away with, uh, let's turn that the other way. Let's charge the highest amount that you can and still feel really good about the value because chances are your, your content is much more valuable than you think. So, so we worked with her on her pricing and the, and the, and the very, and put together really quickly a webinar and Facebook ad combination that started to get her appointments. And, um, and so she had quadrupled the price that she was originally charging. She was charging $500 a client. She raised it to, to $2,000 a client super nervous about about doing that and uh ended up signing up three clients in her first month and uh and and at at now four times what she was charging before and were those clients coming in as cold leads like they were coming in from the facebook ads or people that she didn't already know yeah these were complete right. strangers right. so so this was facebook ad to a about a 45 minute webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of that webinar, we invited people to schedule a, just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Clara. And, uh, and that's it, right? No previous relationship. She didn't have a list. Uh, there was no nurture. There yeah. was no social media. There was none of that. It was just a Facebook ad to a webinar, to an appointment. And, uh, and, and in, and about two phone calls, mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to turn them into clients and signed up three right away uh, at $2,000 each did the same thing the next month, but now was uh, called me up and said, Hey, now I'm having trouble. I don't have enough time. Like if I <laughs> keep doing that, <laughs> I'd, I'm not going to, cause she was also uh, planning uh, uh, to travel. Right. So she was already limited on time. So six clients into this, she's like, wait a minute, what do I do? And I said, well, uh, you could start a waiting list or you could raise your prices or you could do both. <laughs> so she said, well, I'll try raising my prices." So she took it and bump, bumped it now up to 3000 yeah. and, um, and then signed up two more right away. And it's like, now she's like, now I have a real problem. Right. And I said, well, okay, well put the waiting list in, uh, while we work on your online course. And, uh, as soon as she put the waiting list on, people started emailing her saying, look, can you just take one more? Can you just take me? <laughs> right. And it, it, cause it was very interesting to see the sort of the psychology of what happened with right. the waiting list. People wanted it more. 
Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so, so that was an interesting problem to have. But to go from you know really no one to talk to and really undercharging to being uh, completely booked and and charging um, about five times more. Uh, six, actually six times more than than what she was originally charging um, in just a few months was was huge. Uh, but now she like she's booked, booked yeah. solid. Like you yeah. can't get her one on one. So what's the next best thing? Well, her online course. And so we took the same webinar, re-recorded it. This time, instead of closing to an appointment, we're now closing to an online program. And uh, she's basically doubling her money. So for every uh, for every hundred dollars she's spending on Facebook ads, where she's earning two hundred dollars back. So recouping that investment, and and now we're we're working with her to ramp that up. Uh, we're we're not sure how big that audience actually scales to, but yeah. but you know she's only really um, uh, targeting a fraction of that the the audience that's available to her and she's also still able to take on take those on as one-on-one -on -one clients when she has availability so yeah. um you know it's a great example of how uh, someone can go from you know nothing going on or and and just kind of hoping and praying to you know full uh of clients and now and 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 being able to have the money to invest into creating uh, that online program and to to ramp up the the promotions of that's that incredible yeah let, like, I'd love to kind of break that down even more and talk about some of the specifics along the way so is Clara like what kind of niche is she in like is she doing something really specific and just nobody else is doing what she's doing or is she in a space that's really competitive that's where it's really interesting because because um, a lot of people think that the niche has to be just so unique that nobody else is doing it um, and you know not, that can't be further from the truth. I mean, a lot of people can succeed in in the same niche alongside a lot of other people who are in the same niche. Um, and and we actually proved that out in in some of our own programs in one of the toughest markets there is. That's parenting, <laughs> um, right? There's a lot of parenting coaches and a lot of parenting authors and a lot of parenting experts, yeah. and a lot of them give their stuff away for free. And so we we kind of took that as a challenge. Um, but you know, getting back to Clara. You know, she she's a, a health coach, and believe it or not, she's coaching other health coaches about their health. <laughs> and and so it's it's it was kind of a niche that we had to kind of go. Hmm, is this a niche? And through uh, through we we saw right away with the performance of the Facebook ads and just you know the engagement through the webinar because we track and measure everything. Um, just how big of a problem that actually was. And it turns out there's lots of other uh, coaches who do the same thing. But uh, so she's not the only one. It's not like there's just some magic formula here that is making it work for her and, and, and no one else. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, what resonates with you? Like what, what, uh, what audience is your content best suited to help? Um, cause she could have helped a lot of different people, you know, with, with weight loss and help and healthy eating or, uh, healthy eating and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, what audience really needs the kind of content that, or help that you can give and connect the dots. And what, what I think what's really special about Clara's case is that she's passionate about that. She's passionate about that particular audience and therefore her content really resonates with that audience. Yeah, fantastic. So so where does somebody start? So I'm hearing about a bunch of different pieces. Like, So there's obviously sort of like defining exactly what are you offering and who you're offering it to. But I'm hearing about we've got Facebook ads and there obviously has to be a target there. And then we're pushing them to a landing page for a webinar. It sounded like there was a couple of actual phone calls where she was actually closing people. And then now, of course, she's got an online course that she's doing as well. So there's lots of different pieces, lots of different moving parts. What, how do you like, how do you put the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart? Like what, where do you even start? Yeah. And I, that is an excellent point that you bring up because that's where a lot of people go wrong is that they skip 
ahead. Like they'll get an email campaign and someone doing a launch about a Facebook ads program and they'll go, oh yeah, I got to go and do Facebook ads or someone else doing one about uh, webinars and selling and oh yeah, I got to go do a webinar. And you know, those are all building blocks of a system that needs to be uh, very sequential and uh, you need to have all the pieces kind of lined up in, in just the right way. And it starts with knowing who, you know, who your content is best suited for, right? Yeah. And, and a lot of people call this niche. I, I'll even, um, but, but it's more than that. It's, it's really knowing your content, who it's for, and what the results are that people can achieve as a result of your content. So whether it be an online course or it be a coaching program, you gotta be very clear on mm -hmm. what is the result that you produce for people. And, and how do you test that? Like, how do you even know if you've got the right one? Obviously, Clara could have done like a hundred different things in the, in the field that she's in. Mm -hmm. How do you narrow it down? Yeah, and that's where, uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to spend thousands of dollars running tests and, and, and Facebook ads and, you know, and testing it out that way. It's very expensive. And most people uh, don't have the... Oh, what's the word? Um, I guess the confidence to kind of see that through it can be very costly. I mean, big companies do that. They'll they'll test a lot of things and they'll throw budgets at it. We we like to dig deep, and what I like to do is really just ask a lot of questions about um, so about a person and and say, look, you know, where did you start with this, right? Where where did you if if it's a result that they have achieved, or you know, what, what got them into this? And through that, we are able to kind of really connect to some part of that coach or that course creator that suggests this is why they are so good at that. That mm -hmm. this is why this is content that they really resonate. And we look for people just like them, mm -hmm. right? So for Clara, she is a health coach who also felt like um, that she was going through some struggles with her own um, health, weight, healthy eating, that sort of thing, and had to overcome quite a lot uh, in terms of her own journey. And then, so th as we drew that story out from her, we realized, well, wait a minute, maybe there's more out there just like you who've yeah. been on the same journey that you've been on. And, um, and so we didn't have to look very far to be able to, to connect that. And, and so we have to kind of get away from, you know, where, where do I market this where I can just make a, an absolute ton of money? Because I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Yeah. It's like, show me the most profitable niche. <laughs> and, 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 you know, my background, I've been doing internet marketing since uh, about 1998. And it was always the same thing. People said, what are the hottest selling products? What are the hottest selling niches? And we've come to realize that it's not about that. Because we can find a niche for you based on who you are and not necessarily what, what the marketplace is, right? Because mm -hmm. chances are if you've been through it or you are passionate about it and you resonate with it, then, um, then we're going to find an audience out there just like you. And, and, and Facebook is wonderful for that because they've profiled all of us yeah. <laughs> in terms of, in terms of what our great. interests are and the groups we've joined and the things we like and we yeah. don't like and we click on um, where it becomes so laser targeted. So you want, you want to find, and, and now they call them lookalike audiences where uh, you can find more people who are just like you and the people that you work with. So, so for, for, so we took something that's infinite and we narrowed it down to just a couple of ideas. And, and in this case, it turned out that the, the first idea uh, worked out really well. There's, there's lots of other ones uh, that, that we probably could have gone to as well. But what we wouldn't have done is just put it out there as like another healthy eating program mm -hmm. or another weight loss program. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate. It doesn't connect. It's got to be a specific solution to a specific problem for a specific group of people. Awesome. And so it's, that's the problem. Uh, that that's really what it is. It's health coaches who are struggling with their, their own health and really need someone who understands what that's like 
yeah. to guide them through it. Yeah. And that's why it works. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you really came to that. And then, and then what, like what happened? Like, what's the next step after that, after identifying what you think that, that specific problem for the specific person, for the specific, you know, output or resolution. And um, once you've got that figured out, where do you go next? Is it the webinar? Is it the Facebook ad? Is it the, like, what, what's next? Yeah. Well, we, the, what's next is we verify on Facebook. It's not to launch the Facebook ad, but it's to find an audience on Facebook. So we need an easily targetable audience. And sometimes it's in, in some cases it's LinkedIn because it, you know, if you're like, for example, with, with uh, the work that I do with coaches, if I'm looking for life coaches, they're much easier to, to advertise to on LinkedIn mm -hmm. because of the job title. Right? right. And, and anybody who has a job title, you should probably look at LinkedIn ads uh, as well, or, as an alternative to Facebook. But on Facebook, what we do is we, we use something called the audience insights tool. And we try to find ways that we can get to people who are just like, so in this case, just like Clara. So where do we find other health coaches that might be struggling with this very same problem? Mm -hmm. And so we look at the books that they read, the events that they attend, the um, you know, the courses that they take, the products that they buy, uh, the certification programs that they're part of, the groups that they're, they're joined up to anywhere and anywhere that we, that we can look at and say, yep, that's a health coach. Right. Uh, and so, so we make a list of those things and what we're looking for is, uh, can we easily target them? Uh, cause sometimes you'll look and realize, Hmm, you know, they're a little bit hard to a little bit hard to a uh, little bit hard to find. So we're looking for that. Is there an audience that we can that we can start with? If we have that, then we move on to the webinar. But we but we stay with it. We validate the fact that we actually have a source of audience that we could target on Facebook or LinkedIn or some other source. And then you're getting people onto onto a webinar. It sounds like is, yes. is the next thing. And uh, I know lots of different people are talking about. Webinars, I liked, just to kind of dig into that a little bit, um, I liked that you mentioning as, a, as an undercurrent to this that, you know, you, you really picked the, the uh, niche that uh, Clara was really passionate about and that she, like, you know, when somebody's really passionate about something, then they're going to attract the other people that are equally passionate. And in my mind, the best way to do that is with that connection that video can bring. So how do you, how do you approach that? Right. And that's a very interesting point as well, because I hear a lot of talk about how, and, and there's different types of video, right? There's videos like where you can, you're, you're looking at the camera and it's your face on camera and it's very personal. And there's other videos where you don't see the person at all. And there's, it, it, it's PowerPoint slides or it's pictures or going by or whatever it is. And we've actually, um, you know, I mean, we, we hear all the rumors that everyone kind of believes that looking at a camera is the best in terms of engagement. Yeah. And from our testing, we have no evidence to support that, um, that it's exactly the same whether you are on camera or if you are just simply using PowerPoint slides uh, and, and images. <laughs> yes. And some of our early... Uh, and because we bought into it, we bought into it as well, right? Yeah. And said, yeah, you know, we got to take this to the next level. You know, we got we to gotta be on camera. Our clients have to be on camera. And so I went out and I got a, a, a decent HD camera. Um, and if you're seeing it right now, <laughs> we're using it, 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 it's, you look great. <laughs> fairly, yeah, it's fairly good, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I got the lighting kits and I got all that stuff. Problem was when we were doing, uh, recording the webinars with clients, uh, they didn't always have uh, a great webcam or um, good lighting or whatever. And the, the, some of the challenges or some of them would like be, you know, sipping on water <laughs> while they're answering a question. There was all sorts of weird things that, that would happen on camera that wouldn't happen if we were just using, you know, uh, PowerPoint sites. And so we found them very, very difficult uh, to, to produce. Uh, it created a, uh, just a, an extra level of anxiety in yeah. terms of the, of the client because they felt like they had to be so ready and so prepared. So we split test it 
And in some cases, actually, the ones where they were not on camera actually outproduced the ones that um, that where they are. Fascinating. And, Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's because the focus is now on the content yeah. and not the speaker, yeah. right? And and so uh, and and what's wonderful about that is that they're so much easier to produce, right? Uh, if I'm producing a webinar that way, or if I'm producing a course that way, think about how much faster and easier it would be to create a great webinar um, that you didn't you didn't have to show your face on, right? That you, know, you put a picture and it it it's images, it's PowerPoint slides or Keynote or whatever you're using, and 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 that's really all the visual part is. And so you now you want to keep that moving, you want to have that screen moving so it keeps and holds their attention. Yeah. Uh, but but absolutely, it it, it the focus is now more on the content yeah. rather than watching the video. And I think with, when it's just a video like what you're seeing right now, without seeing words or pictures or images or whatever on the screen, uh, people will minimize it. Right. And they'll multitask they'll just listen. during the yeah. webinar. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, like if we really got analytical about the – uh, about the performance of these webinars, we could we could probably uh, we could probably find evidence to support that. Yeah. Um, but what we find is with 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 these ones, they're more teaching webinars, and uh, where we're giving some great content, but in a very specific way, because there's a journey we want to take people on in that webinar, where they get to the end and they feel like the next logical step there is is scheduling an appointment with you or joining your your uh, your whatever entry level uh, online program you have and that's the logical next step for them very cool and yeah yeah i want to hear more about that so tell me about so because uh, my question was going to be uh, before that statement was just like yeah like so so what are the tips for the webinar so you're saying that we need to take the viewer of the webinar through that journey what is the like quick and dirty map of that journey look like? And what are the, some of the things that somebody is putting together a webinar maybe for the first time? What are the things that they need to think about and make sure that they incorporate? So I'll give you the quick and dirty map, and be, I'm gonna, uh, but I'm going to preface it with a warning. <laughs> and that is avoid the mistake that people make. And that is don't do what you've seen done in other webinars, yeah. right? Uh, and and so and and talk for ten minutes about how much value you're going to give to people in a webinar and all and you hear it all the time and it's usually you know very you know like first time you know you know webinar presenters or they're just doing what they've seen done in other webinars mm -hmm. and so don't copy what you see other people doing because you don't know if it works or not <laughs> uh, that's the other thing so so the first thing is. And, and this is armed with your niche market and you know what they care about and you know what their problem is. You've got to know what their pain points are. So a good webinar has to have a solid title and a promise. So, um, and, and the, the promise is, okay, we know you're having this problem and so this webinar is going to help you to solve that problem. So you've got to make that, so by the end of this, you're going to have some concrete steps or some, you know, and, and you're, you're going to be able to take the next steps to solve this problem. So it's got to have a strong promise. Like, and, and I'll use the parenting market as an example, like being a better parent, it's not strong enough. Right? It's, no, I got to solve for like my kid who won't go to sleep or eat vegetables. <laughs> Those are the yeah, problems that right? I have. <laughs> like the kid that's bouncing off the walls because yeah. they won't go to bed and they're driving you crazy, right? Like yeah. that, it's got to be that intense, right? And if it is, you'll really be able to, and, and the health coach who is, feels like an absolute fraud and a failure yeah, because they're a trained health coach and they feel like they should know better, but yet they're still struggling with their health, mm -hmm. right? That kind of thing. So it's got to have that. So 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 we call that a hook. You know, sometimes you hear it called a hook. Um, yeah. You know, but it's it it's got to have that strong promise. And so from there, so we know what our audience wants. We know what we're promising. The middle is pretty much um, you you got to establish your credibility. So tell your story. Why should people listen to you? Why? You know, why are you so passionate about this and, and, and why are you so passionate about helping people with this problem? Mm -hmm. uh, from there, we need to create a little bit of awareness of why the problem exists. So um, in, some, in some sales copywriting courses, they call this aggravating the problem. Um, and I even heard, heard one person call it pouring salt in the wound. It's not quite like that. But, it's, but, 
it's awareness. Why mm -hmm. does this happen? Why is this problem so difficult to solve? Why has every attempt that you've tried to solve this problem in the past failed um, or, or seemed to fail? And, and, and so that we're, we're kind of, you know, bringing all of that into reality and, and why, why did that contribute to it not working? And then, and then here's what you need to be doing instead, not how to do it, just what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's where a lot of webinars go wrong is they go too deep in their content. And I don't mean this from a point of view of holding back. I mean, it's like you got to give people the right content in a, They're not ready for that level. Right. It's kind of like, it's kind of like blasting people in a, in the face with a fire hose when they say they're thirsty. It's, it's, right. it's, it's too much. So you tell them what they need to be doing to solve the problem and to avoid the, all of the previous reasons why it didn't work. And, um, and, and so in doing so it positions whatever you want to do next, whether it be to get an appointment for your coaching or your consulting yeah, or, to sell your um what your online program and so it at, at that point you could either offer either not both either or mm -hmm. right so you got to decide on a single call to action do you want them to take your course or do you want them to book a, a schedule a, a phone call with you mm -hmm. and uh and it's just such a logical step because you've taken this person through a journey You've promised to help solve their problem. You've educated them on why this problem has been so difficult to solve. And now you've told them exactly what they need to start doing differently in order to solve it. And then offering yourself as a way to kind of guide them, guide them through that, whether it be through coaching or, um, or through a course. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Do you think that there's a difference in what you need to accomplish in that webinar if it is coaching uh, which is like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing versus the desire to put them into something like a course that doesn't have that one-to-one -one connection in the same way? In the content, no. I would say it's exactly the same. Um, and, and I think that this, uh, there, there's some confusion about that uh, in, in some of the marketing that I see. But no, it's exactly the same because at the end of the day, it's not about how we're solving the problem. It's about what the problem is, why it's been so difficult to solve, and what they need to do about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so from there, you real, there's really two potential offers you can make and you have to decide. And that's, that's another thing that a lot of people do wrong is they, they say, here's all the ways I can help you. You can get my ebook. You can, I can coach you. You can take this course and that course. And it, here's my menu, choose something. And it doesn't work. You have to have a single, a single call to action. And so, but at that point it could really be either or. So you decide wh where does this serve them the best mm -hmm. or does it serve me the best? And I always believe if, if you're a coach and you do one-on-one um, -on -one work, that's always your best offer. And the best use for an online course for a coach, I believe, is what we call um, drop selling. And that is, let's say in Clara's case, she has a, a client who, you know, she's, they're perfect to work together, but for whatever reason, this client doesn't have $3,000 to hire her as the coach. Well, the next best thing is get her online version of the program for 500, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? She's, she can still email Clara with some questions, but the video content in her course will guide her through a very similar process. So that works as well. Um, but in a case like hers where she's now too busy to take on the one-on-one -on -one calls, we've removed that and just gone directly down to the course and go, and we go the other way. Right. So, um, but we have two versions of the webinar and we can switch back and forth between them mm -hmm. depending on what she needs. If she wants appointments, we run version A. If she wants to just sell the course directly, we run version B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been fantastic. So I feel like we've kind of, we, we've <laughs> gone through a journey here, right? So we started talking about what is the, you know, what are the problems that people can solve and like who, the specific problems that they can solve for specific people and how do you then translate that into finding an audience and discovering if you can even sort of segment that down, whether that like using Facebook ads for testing so that you later can use Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads for actually advertising to those people, 
bringing them into that, you know, the landing page, which talks about the problem that you're going to solve, why it's a problem, why they should trust you, and the fact that they can get on that webinar in order to, to learn more and take next steps. Of course, the, the, the journey that they go through that webinar with, so they get to the very end and they're basically ready to say, okay, great, now the very next step is, uh, as you just said, that, that call to action, whether it's the one-to-one -one program or in Clara's case where she can't do that with everybody anymore, she's pushing straight to the course. So I love that. And I, I like the fact that you mentioned the journey when it came to the webinar, but it's almost like it's, like it's, it's even before that. It's like you have to have the plan in place so that you're really taking them through that journey right from when they're on Facebook as having a problem and not even necessarily searching for a solution to their problem, but you're pulling them in there and then through this, through this stream right out, uh, right out the other end. So this has been, uh, this has been, this has been fantastic. Jack, how do people find more about, out more about what you're doing and how do they come and check out the, the content that you're doing? I know that you've got like a really great program helping people put together webinars. Where do they go? How do they find out more from you? Yeah, the best place to go is to www.coachmarketinglab.com. Uh, I have a webinar there that surprise uh, <laughs> that you can watch, and it's going to take you through the entire process that we recommend. And uh, if that resonates with you, at the end of that webinar, you can click a link and schedule an appointment with me, and we will go through and uh, together, you and I will map out an, an entire strategy for uh, for your business, whether whether a coach who's trying to get clients or um, you're trying to sell your online course. Because at the end of the day, it's the process is identical. It's really just you know. The, the call to action. So coachmarketinglab.com and also uh, check out chuckandersoncoaching.com and uh, watch a video there called the uh, Unstoppable Coaching Lead Funnel. It, it'll really give you a great sense of how we use webinars to accomplish this. Fantastic. I've learned a lot. I was even taking some notes while we were chatting. I was like, oh, I, I need to pay attention to that because <laughs> there's always, always ways to improve. So this has been really fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think next time we definitely will have to make it in studio. It would be great to have you uh, down to Thinkific HQ since we are in the same city and we can probably do that uh, sometime in the next few months would be really great. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Miranda, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it thanks, was a for pleasure. Coming. thanks for coming on the show. Cheers.